I want you to be in a position where money is not a part of your decision-making process. One of the big problems with people and money is so many people lie to themselves that money doesn't matter and why you need to reformat your mental where you understand the true importance of having money in your life. And I'm not talking about being a millionaire, living in the mansion. I'm gonna talk about some very real stuff. You hear many people who's like, it doesn't matter how much money you make. It doesn't really matter if you have money or if you don't have money. Be happy, let the community take care of you, work with the community. Money doesn't matter. Money doesn't buy happiness. Money doesn't do any of these things. Money is nothing. I would vigorously disagree with most of those sentiments. Money is everything when you don't have it. When you don't have money, it is at the forefront of your mind. It weighs into every decision that you make. Are you going on vacation? If you're going on vacation, where are you gonna stay? And if where are you gonna stay, can you get a discount? Money is always on your mind when you don't have it or you don't have enough of it. When I was going through my situation with child support court, I was able to fight my case by myself. Let me let you on the inside of my mental. I had an attorney who wasn't just pretty much not doing anything that I wanted. So I got rid of him and I took over my case and I had a fundamental concept. I'm going to win. But once again, how did I even get into this position? So let me just walk you through what happens to the typical man that finds himself in this situation. Number one, you have a job and you can only miss so many days of that job before it begins to impact your overall financial life. So you really don't have the ability to address your case in the manner that you want to, even if you have an attorney, because once again, are you going to have the best of the best of the best attorneys, or are you just gonna have some attorney? The more complicated your case is, the more likely you're gonna need the best of the best, but you can't afford that. But you can afford to vigorously fight your case if you had the ability to fight your case and not be concerned about money. That was my situation. And the online business that was for the most part fairly automatic, it did take management, but because I had that going for me. I was able to fight my case and win. I was able to devote hours and hours and hours on my case. Here's another case where money matters. Currently, we're in the middle of a government shutdown. We have people with cancer, chronic illnesses. They don't have a check, and at some point, this is going to impact their benefits. When you live paycheck to paycheck, you have put yourself in a position of extreme duress because money is always on your mind. It's everything, because when you don't have money, money is everything. Once you can pull money out of the process and look at what makes you happy, what makes you healthy, what gives you joy, enjoyment, what gives you freedom, it's a different ball game. But as long as you're looking at money from this negative standpoint, and like the fire movement, this is one of my biggest problems with it. Whenever someone who has, quote, done well or reached their level of financial independence, it always comes back to, do I need this sports car? I don't really need to live in this 5,000 square foot house. I really don't need to take these fancy vacations. It always comes down to, do I need these things to live? Do I need these things to be happy? Because it's a financial choice. It's a financial decision. Because money, when you don't have it, is everything. And many of these people who have, quote, reached financial independence live and act like beggars, which has started this new thing. For you to be rich, you must be pathologically cheap. You must not have anything and you must experience delayed gratification every day. I fundamentally have a problem with that because I too used to believe that. And as long as I was in that trajectory, my life was horrible. You know when my life was good? The weekends, birthday party, few games. Whenever I was, quote, away from the job. I did a job, I did it very well. I didn't enjoy it, I didn't like it, but it paid the bills. 
Many of you are finding yourself in that situation. You're not doing what you want to do. You're doing what you have to do because you don't have any money. And when you don't have any money, money is everything. The first place you need to start is with your own relationship with money. And if you have what I call a scarcity mindset, it's going to be very hard for you to win the money game. And the money game is not having money. The money game is having mental freedom. When you have money or F you money, as a lot of people like to say, and today, you know, F you money could be 10, 20, 30 K, not millions, not hundreds of thousands of dollars, just 10 to $50,000 can be F you money because it gives you a moment to <sighs> exhale, relax, breathe, and think about some stuff. When I wrote my first book, I had a few hundred thousand dollars in the bank. Spent the way that I was spending it, I could have went seven, eight, nine years off that money. Not invested, just pulling off 1,500, 1,800 bucks a month. But once again, I put myself on that budget and I was willing to do that for two years because I was running for a goal. There is no way in my wildest nightmares what I want to be living on 1500 bucks a month for the rest of my life. No, there's a lot of beautiful and rich things in life that's going to take more than 1500 bucks per month. It's going to take more than $2,000 per month. It's going to take more than $3,000 per month. The creed here is make more money. What you should do is look at your relationship with money from a point of abundance. Even when you don't have any, that's the hardest trick to look at money as a ever flowing stream of financial resources when you don't have any, because it's got to happen before the stream starts. You mentally must prepare for more money because money matters. I remember, and you should really take note of this. We have two groups of people in this country. We have people who know what money looks like and we have people who think they know what money looks like. I was in the storage auction days. So I, I, I'm at Phipps Plaza. I was dating this girl. I know, I know MGTOW's got to get triggered. And she was a sweet girl. And I was getting her something very expensive and very nice. So I went to Tiffany and Company. Now let me describe to you how I went to Tiffany and Company. I had a shirt, unbeknownst to the salesperson pointed it out, had a hole in it. I had on military fatigue pants, work boots. I hadn't shaved and I walked in there and I started looking at stuff. And this is something that you should understand. You always hear these stories of people being denied access to these high end stores because of how they look. I've never experienced that in my life. And I've gone in places looking like an absolute bum. So I'm in there. I'm probably a little ripe because I had been working and each salesperson treated me with the utmost respect. Well, what about this? And what about this piece? And what about this piece? I was like, okay. Then I, there was this Tiffany chain with a little lock on it. I said, I'll take that one. All right, sir. Would you want us to wrap it up? And then I didn't get the watch, but there was this uh, chronological piece. It was like 5,000. And I was like, hey, let me check it out. Pulled it out, gave it to me, let me look, put it on my wrist. Once again, did I mention I was ripe? So I walked out of that store after spending 2,200 bucks. I don't know what it is, but when you have money, it isn't what you wear, it's how you walk. They knew that I had money even though I looked like a bum. They knew it. Every person in there knew it. Well, Mr. Cameron, we'll, we'll put you on the email list. I'll give you a call to check on you, make sure she likes it. They treated me like royalty. That is my normal experience wherever I go. I don't care. I was at the Bentley dealership. Now, I didn't have the money to afford a Bentley when I went to the Bentley dealership. I was just in there looking at it because I have this weird relationship with Bentleys and Rolls Royce because I like the car. But if I was going to get one, someone would have to be driving me. I wouldn't want to drive a Rolls Royce. I would want someone to drive me. And I don't really have that kind of flow, you know, to pay someone 50, 60, 70, 80 K a year just to drive me around. At this point in my life, it's impractical. It makes no sense since I stay at home most of the time. Once again, I'm looking kind of bummy. They even let me test drive this Rolls. Well, we need your insurance and we need your driver's license. That's it. 
But I went in and I said, look, you know, I am not buying this car today. It's just I've always wanted to drive one. I wanted to get a feel. No problem, Mr. Cameron. What I'm trying to convey to you is it isn't how you look. It isn't how you dress. It is the spirit within you that indicates that you have abundance and resources and that will get you over time and time again. They know the people who see people with money, they know who have money and they know who don't. My bankers, when I go in the bank, hey, Mr. Cameron, they know. So you don't have to dress a certain way. You don't have to drive, drive in a certain kind of car. You don't have to live in a certain type of neighborhood. But when you get real money, because money matters, you will start to experience this across the spectrum of your life because the money is a byproduct of accomplishment. Money's just a way of keeping score. When you want to develop flow, you gotta let a, go a lot of these preconceived notions. That a person with money, because I, I hear this all the time. Uh, someone during the last live stream was like, hey, I tried to show some of your videos. They didn't think you were professional enough. Your lack of professionalism. I guarantee you that if you put my bank account next to the person who said that, they would be ashamed. Doesn't matter. Remember how I told you there was two groups of people? Those who know what people with money act, look like, and those who think they know. It kind of reminds me of this scene this movie with DMX where they go in this dealership and it was uh, the guy from Blackish and he was acting like a clown. And they meet this guy, who, this brother who's a salesman and he's just like, hey, you know, these guys don't look like money. And then there's this other salesman over. He knows that they have money. He knows it. He feels it because he's dealt with these type of folks before. Many people have too personal of a relationship with money. Money defines who they are and how they are. And what I mean by that is, if they don't have money, they feel like crap. How many of you go to stores and look around and try stuff on when you have no money? I did that stuff all of the time because at that time I was like, I don't have any money now, but I'm gonna have some money later. This is what I used to tell myself. I don't have money now, but later in the future I will have money. I was programming myself to attract money. If you a person, because if it is so heartbreaking for you to go somewhere and not be able to afford something, your relationship with money is too personal. You've let money define who you are because you can go out and meet somebody and not have any money in because this person likes you so much they can start opening up doors to get you money. Money's a resource. Money's a spirit and money's an energy. If you have energy and spirit that of scarcity that repels money that chases money away because you focus too much on not having it and there is no focus on obtaining it that's why america's a nation of consumers i was put the producer to consumer ratio at there's five or six percent of us who are producing for the other 95%. Maybe it's 10%, I haven't looked up the numbers, but let's just go ahead and say 10% of us are producers, the other 90% are consumers. And with a consumer mindset, with a scarcity mindset, with a penny mindset, this guides every choice you make. Money matters, and the only people who say money don't matter are usually people with money. They've transcended the petty what I call petty bills. Car note, I don't have any car notes. I got two cars. Mortgage, my mortgage is represent less than 10% of my income. I don't have, quote, normal bills. When you get to that point, you start looking at things so differently. You start to open up your eyes. You start to buy stuff because you like it, not because Wall Street, or Madison Avenue, or whatever advertising outlet has your mind. You buy it because you like it. You ever see that these well-off people, and you like, well, they dress kind of funny. They dress funny to you. They dress the way that they want to because they have the money and the personal prerogative to get what they want, not what you or anyone else thinks that they should have. That is personal freedom. 
Now, how does one get money? Got you. First of all, you need to start thinking about money in a terms of when I get it. Most people, and this is something that we'll talk about quite a bit, are constantly saying, I can't afford it. I don't have it. There's this internal dialogue that is consistently going on that says, I don't have money. You tell your subconscious mind you don't have your money, your subconscious mind is like a computer. You does exactly what you tell it to do. So you're sending all of these messages, I don't have, I can't afford, that's too much, that's crazy, I'm not gonna do it. And your subconscious mind's like, okay boss, this is how you're gonna make it. So when you start reprogramming yourself with, I don't have money now, but I will have it later, and I did not know what I was doing. It was just, I was super optimistic. I was like, you know what? This is gonna work out, we are gonna get money. One day, I remember, I was driving on this road that's not too far from my house, years ago, and I said, one day, I'm gonna live in this neighborhood. That's what I just said. I'm gonna, I didn't know how, I didn't have a plan, I didn't have a business at the time, I had a job. I said, one day, I'm gonna live in this neighborhood. You must forecast the money to come into your life before it does, and this is a big one. You got to stop trying to steer money with your hands. What I mean by that is many people, they got their hands on the steering wheel of the vehicle that they want to get money. Collectively, if you're a young black male, you can get money playing basketball, you can get money being in the NFL, you can get money bo boxing or track and field. Those are very acceptable and common way, well not so common because there's not that many athletes, but that's an okay way to get money. But you becoming an engineer? Uh, I don't know about that, bro. You're trying to steer how you have your money and steer how you have your success when you may be ignoring your God-given gifts because you're trying to live up to an expectation based upon some other definitions that people you don't know, don't like, who don't matter, but they have defined that how you should be living your life. Once again, to the person who says, I don't act professional enough because I'm living my life the way that I want to. And this is one of the reasons I get so much hate. There's a lot of people who just like, I can't stand that. He gets on my nerves, but I gotta keep watching him because he drops these jewels, but I can't stand him because I want what he has and I don't know how to get it and he ain't telling me. And actually I am telling you. There's like 2,000 videos up here. The knowledge is in that, but that means you have to sit down with pen and paper, write, pick out what the good stuff is, reject what doesn't work for you. You actually have to work. Which brings me to another point to getting money. There's this uh, principle in business. You buy capacity in advance of needing that capacity. If you have a store or you get in the warehouse and let's say you only need 3,000 square feet, you should rent a 10,000 square foot warehouse. If you need 10,000 square feet, you should rent a 20 or 30,000 square foot warehouse because what's going to happen is you're going to grow into it. Many people, based upon the scarcity mindset, always get less than they already need to quote, save money because they ain't trying to make money. They're trying to save money. This is why you should remove this statement, these words from your mind. I'm not trying to save money. I'm trying to manage money. It gives you more ops, but save money is like, okay, I'm not gonna spend as much as I need to spend. Sometimes you have to spend a lot of money to make money. Many people don't understand that principle, but thanks to this ongoing, this coming recession, many people are gonna understand that principle in great and bold relief because you're gonna see who's making money, who's doing things, and you're gonna see who's gonna disappear. There's a lot of online platform entrepreneurs. They're very good on the platform, but they don't know how to direct traffic off that platform to their own website and get money. That's gonna be the little wrinkle that's gonna mess up a lot of people. Those are some principles to you because money matters. Stop telling yourself it doesn't matter. Stop being mad at people who have more than you. That's just the quickest way, the surest way to make sure you never ever have more money than you need. You need to always go for more. It is better to have $10 million and only need 1 million than to need 1 million and have $10.
you always want to have excess always excess you want to build a war chest you want to have the ability to make moves when other people are quiet because they don't have any money because when there's blood in the streets those who have money they're gonna get that good meat they're gonna get those good deals because they're prepared so with that if you want your basic financial education go below and enroll in my basic money management course this will give you the foundation for f financial education that no one ever told you that you need it because I didn't know that I needed it until I went through the process because once you start to get these principles you will never ever be broke again ever in life so if you like that go below it's the first comment and if you want to speed up some of your learning processes there's some other stuff in another comment for you so with that I will see you guys later in the next video. Subscribe if you want to. YouTube don't send them out to everybody anyway. I will be working on that. I will. Ooh.